Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printed here. In today's video, I'll be talking about how to handle SQL Alchemy exceptions in your Flask app. So this is going to be pretty common and exceptions in this case are actually pretty good because they tell you when the integrity of your database is being compromised. So I'll show you that in a moment, but before I do, uh, I have a Flask SQL Alchemy Basics course on prettyprinted.com. It's free to join. So if you're interested, just go to prettyprinted.com and you can join it and I'll have multiple videos on Flask SQL Alchemy and I'll probably add this video and my other YouTube videos on Flask SQL Alchemy to that course so they can all be in one spot. So check that out at prettyprinted.com. So the reason why I bring this up is because oftentimes you'll build an app and you'll add some SQL Alchemy to it and you'll just assume that everything that the user wants to put in the database will be valid. But that's not always true. So one of the benefits of a SQL database is that it handles the integrity of the database for you. So if invalid data is attempted to be inserted into the database, the database will respond with a complaint. And in this case, it will be an exception. So I'll show you what that looks like and how to handle it. So first, let me create a very basic database model. So what I'll do is I'll import from Flask SQL Alchemy. So let me just do the imports here really quick and instantiate it. So DB is going to be SQL Alchemy passing the app. I already have the database URI. So I'll create a table called member and it's going to inherit from db.model. And what I'll do is I'll create an ID column, which will be the primary key. And then I'll create a second column as the column that I'm going to demonstrate what happens when I try to insert duplicate data. So I'm going to name this column UNIQ. And as you can imagine from this column, it is going to be a unique column. It's going to be a string and I'm going to say unique to true. So unique true means that in this particular table, the value that appears in a row can only appear once in that entire table. So if I put my name as the string in the unique column, then no other row in the table could have my name as well. And if I try to insert my name in a second row, then the database will respond with a complaint. So I have the member table there. So what I'll do is I'll open up Python and I will create this table. So from app import DB and then DB create all. And then let me verify in my database that the table is there and I see the member table. Okay. So everything is good on that end. So what I want to do now is I want to create a very simple route that will insert some data into the database for me. So it's going to be on the index. And what I'll say is the first time around, I'll insert whatever I want. So it's going to be me. So member and unique is going to be my name. So there can only be one instance of my name in the database once I add it. So DB session add Anthony and then DB session commit. And as you'll expect, I'll start up the app and then I'll simply go to the index and it didn't return a response. So database entry at it. All right. So I'll change the name to my last name, Herbert, so I can still demonstrate this and I'll go. And now it's telling me database entry added. So it should actually have two values in the database because the first time it committed it before it got to the error. So let me take a look at my database here and select star from member. All right. So I have two rows in my database, one with my first name and one with my last name. And what I want to do is I want to try to insert again into the database using my name. So I'll change this to Anthony again. And what I'll do is I'll go back to the route. So I'll refresh this and I'll take note at what happens. So I hit enter and I get an error. It's telling me SQL alchemy dot 
exe.integrity error. And then below it, it gives me a little more information. It's telling me that unique constraint failed. Uh, when I insert into member the values Anthony. So what this is saying is that I already have a row in my database with the name Anthony in the unique column. So by trying to insert this again into the database, I get an error because the database won't allow it for integrity reasons. If I were to allow Anthony to be inserted into another row, then this unique would be useless. So it's protecting me from inserting another Anthony into the database when it's supposed to be unique. So how do I handle this in my app? Because if a user saw this screen, it wouldn't make sense to them. And it, this is something you wouldn't want them to see. Of course, I have debug mode enabled. So instead of seeing this, the user would see uh, a 500 error screen, internal server error, or something like that when they went to try to add a duplicate entry unknowingly. So both cases, it's not something you want the user to see. So how do you handle this in your app so they don't see it? Well, there are a couple ways. The first way is to always verify the data yourself. So what I can do is I can query the database and I can say something like, um, so member query filter by unique equals Anthony and then first. All right, so this will give me a value. So let's just call this exists. And if this exists, then I know that I can't add Anthony into the database. So let's pretend like Anthony is some variable that's coming into the route. So these two would be variables instead of hard-coded values. And then once I have the exists, I can say if exists, then I can do one thing. So I can return like this member already exists. And then if it doesn't exist, I can go ahead and add it to the database. So let me just demonstrate this one. I see this member already exists. So I completely avoid the exception that I get. Uh, but if you do it this way, you don't get to take advantage of the database's built-in capability of doing this for you. And it's a little more code. I mean, if things were a little more complicated, there would be more code here. So there's an alternative way of handling this. And that is by just using the exceptions that you already get. So first, let me take a look at what the exception is. It's this. So what I'll do is I'll copy this and I'll import it. So from sqlalchemy.exe, I want to import integrity error. And then what I'll do is I'll have a try except block. So try and what I'm trying to do is create a user Anthony and add Anthony to the session and commit. And if I get the integrity error, so here, then what I want to do is I want to return that the member already exists. And in addition to doing this, I want to do DB session rollback. So when you're dealing with database exceptions or exceptions that come from the database, you always want to roll back in case you're trying to do any other transactions along with the one that caused the exception in the first place. So commit is like the final save when you add things to the database and then roll back is kind of undoing everything that you attempted to do. And you roll back because you got an exception somewhere in the process, because if you were trying to do multiple things in the database at once and one fails, the assumption is that you don't want everything before that to go in the database because there would be some inconsistencies in the data because some of the data was inserted and other data wasn't. So that's why you use rollback here. In this particular case, it doesn't mean anything because I'm only trying to do one thing. But as a general rule, when you use exceptions for your database commits, you want to roll back in the exception block. So I'll save this and this code should actually do the exact same thing. So I'll go here and it tells me the member already exists. So you see two different approaches to handling the same thing. The main difference is uh, you're using the built-in functionality of the database in this second example. And in the first one, you are kind of anticipating what possible exceptions you can get. Now, you do want to anticipate what exceptions you can get in either case. So you should know how your app could possibly fail. 
That way your user never sees any uh, screens that say like internal server error. And you don't have to anticipate them all like as you're writing the app because as you go through testing the app and uh, trying different scenarios, you'll get exceptions for things that you didn't anticipate. So you can just update the code to handle those. So as far as which one you want to use, it's a personal preference. Uh, when it comes to functions that are short, I think the exception one is better. But when you are trying to do things in a function that is very long and you should question if you need a long function in the first place, then you want to add these checks yourself. Because generally speaking, when you add a lot of try except blocks in code, it makes it much more difficult to reason about what happens in the code because it's jumping around everywhere. I mean, an if statement, you can say the same thing, but it's a slightly more mild form of it. But really, you don't want too many if statements or exception catching in your function. And this is really only an issue if your function is long. If it's short, then you can really get away with anything you want because it's pretty easy to understand a function that's only like 10 lines. So it's a personal preference and it depends on your situation. So those are just two ways of handling the error. And any other error that you might encounter uh, from the database, well, not exactly error, but exception, uh, foreign keys, for instance, will give you a lot of integrity errors if things aren't exactly right. So as you go through testing your app and you see those, just keep that in mind and this is one way you can handle it or you can kind of check yourself to make sure that you're not going to violate any integrity in the database before you actually commit something to the database. So that's all I want to talk about today. Um, if you have any questions about this, you can leave a comment below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. If you haven't made your way to prettyprinted.com already and enrolled at the Flash SQL Alchemy Basics course, go do that. And uh, that's it. So if you enjoy watching this video, please watch my next videos and I will talk to you next time.